thanks for having me here. Um, also, um, well, welcome to whoever is out there, wherever you are, uh, whatever you're doing at the same time. Um, this is a, a talk with two parts. Uh, one is a, a more theoretical reflection on uh, the contingency of democracy, uh, inspired by mostly uh, laclai muffian discourse theory. The second is a more arts-based uh, experiment, which aims to translate some of these uh, theoretical dimensions into an art installation, allowing visitors to actually experience these theoretical uh, positions. Um, so if I want to start uh, with that theoretical uh, reflection and take you, and this is, it's nice to have so many uh, fellow Greek presenters because you might recognize the Pnix uh, more than anybody else as the ultimate, um, uh, one of the ultimate starting points of um, democracy. But if we look at um, democracy and basically at society, and if we start by uh, assuming that uh, homogeneity doesn't exist, that actually society is characterized by diversity, then we must immediately acknowledge that because of these differences in political positions, uh, this diversity in identities and identifications, uh, reaching ultimate consensus is in many cases extremely difficult and we actually see many different types of political conflict to deal with these different logics and of course we can have political conflict inside and outside democracy but also very much part of the logics of democracy is this notion of political struggle. Now if we look at different um, and I'm going to go a bit quicker, different theoretizations of political struggle, we unavoidably end up with some of the, the, the Marxist uh, work because that was very much vital uh, in, into these theoretical uh, elaborations. Gramsci's work on political struggle is, is quite uh, interesting in this sense also because he very much compares uh, political struggle with military struggle, but behind all these reflections, we of course find a very strong emphasis on the notion of class struggle uh, as the ultimate um, moment of political struggle. Now, of course, the problem, and this is hardly anything new to say, the problem with these kinds of reflections is that um, we find uh, a very essentialist perspective on the notion of class, and we actually see a privileging of class struggles over any other kind of political struggles. There is, because of that, a very strong need to de-essentialize uh, not just class, but also de-essentialize um, struggle within these Marxist models. And of course, what has uh, what has been done by a number of authors in more post-structuralist uh, approaches is exactly that, through their different reflections not so much on struggle, but on power. And Foucault's work on the multi-directionality of power within his analytics of power is, is quite important there in moving away from this essentialization, not just of class, but of uh, struggle itself. In Laclai and Mouffe's work, contingency, and in the work of many other post-structuralists, contingency plays a vital role. Also looking at uh, discursive contingencies, looking at hegemonies, but also how hegemonies can be disrupted by counter-hegemonic uh, projects. And all this brings much more contingency in political um, struggle. Now, again, as I said, there can be many locations of political struggle, but one uh, is very much located within democracy. And there I could argue that we have two types of, uh, of struggles. One is the struggle over democracy, how democracy as a political practice is articulated, how it's defined, how it's constructed. If you look at David Hell's work, it's fascinating because, of course, these little little letter S in the title, models of democracy, it's not one model. There's a, an infinite number of democratic models that are all different and all have, for instance, a different balance between representation and participation. 
The argument, though, is that there is a struggle going on between these different models, these different ways of articulating uh, democracy. And that is part of the democratic political struggle, that is political struggle over democracy itself. But of course, also within democracy, we find ideological struggles. Right? Democracy is a way of organizing these struggles, trying to remove um, violence out of these struggles, moving in the Mufian term from uh, antagonism proper into agonism. But of course, if we look at the Althusser's work, then we find this immense set of areas within democracy where um, ideological struggles actually take place. And you see the quote on, on screen where ideology uh, permeates all man's activities, uh, woman's activities, one could add, but that's a bit mean, including his economic and political practice. And then we find a list that also includes the family, that includes religion as religious identity, as, as he theorizes it. And so we find um, within democracy many of these ideological struggles. Now, one of the key signifiers in relationship to both struggles within and over democracy is the notion of the people. I mean, the people is one of the key signifiers that we find in many of these democratic political struggles in many different variations, whether it's in the constitution where the actual notion of the people is equated with the nation, where we find uh, the 99, uh, where we find ordinary people being seen as um, articulations of the signifier of the people, but we also find racist, nativist, nationalist articulations of the people, where the signifier actually plays a key role in um, these uh, political struggles within democracy. And who is the people is, of course, a key question uh, related to the question who is the polis, uh, who is actually the, the demos that are uh, given power in a democratic um, uh, setup. So that notion of the people, I think, is, is quite crucial. The second point, apart from emphasizing the importance of the signifier of the people, is the importance of the material. Now, I've been talking very much about the discursive uh, construction of democracy, but we should not forget that democracy is also deeply material. It's a set of practices, right? It's a set of practices that also work on the bodies of the citizens of a particular polis. And so that materiality is, is quite vital. Uh, even the materiality of the people is quite vital to emphasize and to incorporate in our reflections about contingency uh, of democracy triggered by that diverse set of political struggles. So let me go to the second part, because the question I had and the experiment I wanted to engage in is the very simple question, how can we create uh, a moment of experience that allows visitors to actually have embodied experiences of the contingency of democracy? How can we make people feel theory is I think the, the real question behind uh, the second part. And there I moved into arts based research and arts based research is part of what some have called the artistic turn. We've had many uh, turns in academia in the 20th and 21st century, and this is one of them. It has a very long history uh, working with um, artistic repertoires within academia. Um, but in the past decade, it actually became quite significant to that degree that some scholars have, like Patricia Levy have argued that the arts based uh, paradigm is actually the third paradigm, the third methodological paradigm, in addition to quantitative and qualitative um, paradigms. I think this is sort of overstating the case slightly, but that's another discussion. It does show, I think, the, uh, the ambition of uh, arts based research to offer new perspectives. Obviously, it's not the only uh, perspective that is trying to move away from the written text by the integration, in this case, by artistic repertoires. In this slide, which comes from an article I published this year, you'll also see, apart from arts-based research, which is at the very bottom, you'll see uh, visual anthropology, visual sociology, multimodal academic communication, which actually comes from writing studies, but you also see science communication, 
and participatory um, action research as examples of um, traditions and approaches that have moved away from the written text. But the arts-based research approach is quite particular because it allows us to think about hybrid academic uh, positions. It also very much privileges artistic repertoires uh, being truly transdisciplinary and bringing the arts in contact with uh, different disciplines in the fields of, for instance, social sciences and humanities. So the case I want to, uh, for the times that's left, want to talk about um, is called the Mirror Palace of Democracy. It's part of a um, exhibition, it was part of an exhibition called Respublica, which took place in Cyprus at the end of 2017, early 2018. Respublica was much bigger. It had a whole series of festival events. It had one main exhibition with uh, Jutem Wachter, but it also had a second exhibition, which was called Participation Matters. And that took place, had sort of a headquarters in, um, in Limassol, in Cyprus, at the uh, NIM Arts Center, the NAC. Uh, this is actually a Respublica um, ground floor, but the Mirror Palace of Democracy was actually in the basement, so you have to go downstairs, and there you will find this Mirror Palace of Democracy. Now, what was this arts installation? As I said, the, the objective was to make people, visitors, feel um, uh, the contingency of democracy. Uh, and it actually resulted in a decision to build a mirror palace. Um, and this is the construction site in the basement of that arts gallery uh, with the carpenters. It's actually quite funny being having my name, uh, Carpentier, which obviously also means carpenter, but these are the real carpenters that were building the mirror palace. The mirror palace is, as you might know, it's a maze. Uh, that combines walls with mirrors aimed at confusing visitors and actually challenge them to find the exit. It's very much part of fairground attractions. Uh, it's part of child play in a way um, where little kids go into these mirror palaces, bump into every possible wall, come out uh, happily smiling about that experience. And that idea was actually taken uh, into the art center to build this installation, adding uh, a series of videos, uh, almost sort of life sized videos, five of them, each representing a particular ideological project. So when you entered, you were greeted by these voices and screens that each represented a particular ideological project, each of them hailing you to accept their, their ideology, their discourse. And of course, as a visitor, you were literally um, bombarded with this cacophonic overlapping of different voices, different ideological uh, projects, projects. And to jump ahead, these are the, the, the transcripts of the, the, the five videos. They all started, I'm not going to read them aloud, that would take us too far. They all started with the sentence, I am the people. Uh, and then they developed short versions of these ideological uh, positions, authoritarianism, militarism, solidarism, liberalism, and uh, nationalism. I think they were chosen, but that's a different story. They were chosen very much in alignment with a, a separate context. But as I said, that's another story. When you enter these uh, mazes, it was quite dark um, with lots of reflections. What you also found was this experience of being lost in the contingency of democracy with all these political struggles over meaning and over the people. But because of the mirrors, you had also a, a very embodied experience because the, the videos were reflected on the bodies of the visitors. So they were literally inscribed on the bodies of the visitors when they went through the palace working with shadow and, and light. Now, arts-based research is very much also about arguing that we learn from the artistic intervention itself. It's not outside production of knowledge. It's very much embedded within the production of knowledge. And for me, actually being able to construct this artwork also allowed me to reflect further on the contingency of democracy through, for instance, incidents. What you see at the bottom 
of the screen uh, is a little note and that note on a glass wall was the place where one of the coordinators of the arts center thought the exit was. Obviously she crashed into that wall, uh, hit her nose, um, so eventually I put up a, a sign there that, saying that running into the walls of democracy can be painful, please be, uh, be careful. But it was through these uh, material interactions with the installation, with also the visitors, that knowledge was, additional knowledge was produced. Um, I won't show you all the videos. I'll have three points to make about this video installation and uh, uh, installation uh, of, of the Mirror Palace, and I'll be quick. First, to reiterate, uh, knowledge production in arts-based research is not something that becomes disconnected from the artistic intervention. It's integrated. It is iterative. Uh, knowledge production is not just the development of theory and then communicating it afterwards. The process of creating the installation is very much part of the knowledge production process itself. Production informs analysis, as you can read in the quote. One other case um, was because you're building a construction and installation in, in an art center, so you have walls, you have to delimit literally democracy and create an entrance and an exit. And the question of the exit was quite fascinating and at the end we decided to put the exit at a uh, white staircase, a little metal staircase going up to uh, the first floor. Uh, and it was sort of the stairways to heaven, but theoretically it actually raises the question what happens if you leave democracy? Uh, and that is a question that also I think is theoretically highly relevant. The second point is that it also allows us to reflect about the hybridity of subject positions. Some sinner, for instance, have called us uh, artademics, combining the subject position of the artist and the academic. And in other cases, you can refer to a, a triple A um, uh, construction of artists, uh, academics and activists. My argument here is that these, re these different subject positions can actually be reconciled even in the very same person, identifying with these combined uh, subject positions, these articulated subject positions, without instrumentalizing one of them to support uh, and serve the other. And I think these hybridizations of identities, uh, of knowledge producers are quite beneficial. Also because they remind us academics that academia is not the only site of knowledge production, there are many, and because it allows us to take control over our communication as artademics, as activists and uh, uh, artists and academics. Although I should add, it's not always that easy. Um, it requires quite a lot of skills to work in these intersections of academic uh, and artistic work. My last point uh, is that, of course, this kind of uh, installations allows us to reach diversified publics. Uh, different audiences um, go to these kinds of exhibitions. Um, it offers us a perfect opportunity to actually meet our readers. Uh, if we publish a book, we might not even ever see one of these readers unless we get lucky. But there, there is the ultimate confrontation with these uh, different audiences. But we should also not romanticize uh, the art world. Um, the people that visit these exhibitions are also very, very particular. It's not that they um, represent the general public, which I think is uh, another wonderful construction for another paper. It also raises, of course, issues on uh, degrees of participation. To what degree can they actually participate? They can interact with the installation, they're exposed to it, and they can make meaning out of it. But of course, they cannot decide on what is in there. They cannot choose the videos uh, themselves. Th that's, in that sense, there was a, a bit of a restriction on um, uh, in the context of uh, an exhibition like Respublica, which featured discussions about participation. So to wrap up, to conclude, uh, I would argue that the uh, contingency of democracy is a vital issue, uh, theoretically uh, extremely challenging and uh, 
fascinating. Um, but working with these kinds of arts-based research also provides uh, a, a unique and at the same time very challenging opportunity for cir circulating these reflections that are based in democratic theory, reflections about the contingency of um, democracy it allows us to engage in, in a public sphere dialogue in different ways than we do when we write books or publish articles. I should argue and emphasize that at the same time this is still very much theory driven or literature voiced as uh, Patricia Levy calls it. It's still academic research that gets integrated, implicated with artistic uh, repertoires. But that combination, that interaction between uh, academic uh, political theory uh, and academic artistic intervention also provides great opportunities to further develop both political theory and uh, artistic research. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you.